Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking to you about the one thing that I feel like is not talked about at all in the whole wedding planning process and it's honestly like the most important part and that is changing your name after you're married. So obviously if you're not taking your spouse's name after you're married then this doesn't pertain to you but for everyone else this is some really important information that I wish I would have been able to find myself. So just as a disclaimer, I just want to say that this is just my personal experience. So obviously every company and every state is probably going to be different. So don't take everything that I say for granted because it might be actually different for you. So how do you change your name after you get married? I thought for the longest time that after you get married, your last name just like automatically changes. Yeah, come to find out that doesn't happen. <laughs> That's not what happens at all. So what happens is your marriage license, there's a piece of your marriage license that has to be turned into the courthouse. So when we applied for a marriage license, they told us that the pastor had to turn it in within 10 days, but come to find out you can actually turn that piece in yourself. So what we did is we got married on a Tuesday and we turned in our marriage license the very next day. So it was turned in and it was done. So that's the first thing that you have to do is turn in your marriage license to the courthouse. So once you turn in your marriage license to the courthouse, the first thing you need to do is change it at the social security office first. So changing your name at the social security office can be a little bit of a pain. I would suggest not going during the first of the month and going when they first open because they do not take appointments for name change. So if you go during the day, you might be sitting there for a couple of hours, which is not very fun for a five second process. So whenever you go in to change your name, that you need your driver's license, marriage certificate, actual like official document, not a copy. You need your birth certificate and, oh, your social security card. So those four things is what you need to bring to the social security office to change your name. So once they, you get called in to like your little cubicle to get your name changed, all you have to do is show them your documents and then you have to have your parents' social security numbers and their full names. So make sure you have all the information ahead of time. What I did is I went and I printed out all the paperwork and asked my parents for that information so that way it was all ready by the time I got there. After you give them all the information, what they will do is they will verify exactly what you want your new social security card to say and just as a little side note in case there's any random person out there who is planning to do the same thing that i was planning to do my middle name is spelled wrong and i've been wanting to change it like forever and i thought that i would be able to change my middle name when you change your last name and you can't you actually have to go through the court and do it a whole different way it's a very long a lengthy process not as easy as changing your last name but when I was at the social security office they're like oh well, we could change your middle name as well and I'm like okay because when I called the courthouse you know they told us that we had to do X Y and Z a long story short we ended up changing it along with my last name the first time that we went and no one else would change it because we didn't have the legal documentation that we had a court order to change my middle name so I had to go back exactly a week later and change my middle name back to what it was. <laughs> Anyways, so don't do that and think that you're going to get around it because uh, you won't. And it's a pain in the butt. So once your last name is changed at the social security office, you will get your new social security card in 7 to 10 days. If you don't get it within 2 weeks, you have to contact them. I got mine in exactly a week. The next thing that you should do is change your driver's license. So in order to change your driver's license, <laughs> you have to have your original marriage certificate. I bought three copies, certified copies of our marriage certificate and everyone basically wanted the real deal. So I carried a folder of like all my documents in my purse for like, I don't know, three weeks after we got married <laughs> because everyone wanted to see it, like the real one. So whenever you go to DMV to change your last name on your license, all you need is your current license and your original marriage certificate. It's a pretty quick process. It's $29.50 in the state of Pennsylvania to get a brand new license, or if you don't want to pay for a brand new license, you can just get the little paper card to carry with it. 
but I'm one of the new official ones, so I paid for it, and you get a brand new picture, but the expiration date stays the same, just so you know. So you get that in the same exact day, and then um, after you have those two things done, those are the main things, then you can kind of change it everywhere else. A lot of people want to see your new license with your new name on it, so my personal suggestion is definitely do it right after you do your social security card. So changing your name on your bank accounts. For my bank accounts it was pretty easy. Uh, I just had to physically go into where I actually do most of my banking and show them um, the marriage certificate, show them my license, and they changed it on all my accounts pretty quick and I got my new cards within two weeks. Another company that I have a credit card through all I had to do was fax them some information and then they sent me a new card again in about two weeks. So all that was done pretty easily. The bank that my car is through was not very easy. It's an out of state bank so they did not let me fax any information over. I physically had to drive an hour each way to go to this bank and literally I was there for five seconds. All I had to do was sign my name on two pieces of paper and they copied the marriage license. So just be aware that there are some places where it might not be as easy as just faxing over some information or mailing in some information. It was a pretty big inconvenience to have to do that, but luckily there was only one place that I had to do that for. My student loans were really, really easy. Again, the only thing I had to do for them is just fax them over a copy of our marriage license and my driver's license and then our account number and the name that I wanted to appear the new name that I wanted to appear on um, the accounts. My car insurance is currently through like family, so I don't know if it was that easy just because they know who I am or if it's really that easy, but for my car insurance, all I had to do was call them, let them know that I got married and to change my last name on my account. And it was simple, it was done that day. I got a new card in the mail with my new name on it about a week later. So in order to change my name on my health insurance, I called who my health insurance is through and they said I need to go and call the employer and change it through the employer which the insurance is through because it's not independent it's through the employer so again all I had to do was call the employer that the insurance is through and tell them that I got married this is the new name that it's supposed to be and I should be receiving my card sometime this week for work all I had to do was, and obviously every job is different, so this was just, like I said, my personal experience. Um, they just needed my social security card, my new social security card, and our marriage license. I have a whole list of all the places that I knew that I needed to change my name at, so that way I could just get it all done, and it was pretty simple and organized. It was just a little time consuming, but calling on my doctor's office, it was pretty easy. All I just told them was, hey, this is who I am, I recently got married, can you change my last name on my account to this? because that is my new married name. And all of my doctor's offices were fine with it. There's one, only one office that would not let me change it. They said that they needed my new insurance card with that name on it in order to change it. But that was the only one that gave me any problems. If you guys don't know, I'm a licensed registered hygienist in the state of Pennsylvania. And I'm also licensed to give uh, local anesthesia. So in order to change those license, I had to print out a form and send them a copy of our marriage license and a copy of my old license and my new license. So basically just a document with my last name as it was that they have and a copy of a document with my last name as it is now. So that was pretty easy. It was a $5 fee. I'm just waiting to get that back in the mail. You didn't have to pay the $5 fee if you didn't want the updated license with the new name. If you didn't want to pay the fee, you would just get it updated in the system, but you wouldn't physically get a new license with that name on it until you actually have to renew. So I already went over all the credit and debit cards. Once you change it through that bank, they will automatically change all your accounts for you and send you all new cards. And remember that your new cards are going to have new expiration dates and new CVVs. So if you have automatic payments on things, make sure as soon as you get them, you update that. Otherwise, none of your payments are going to go through. And new checks. Ordering new checks, at least through my bank, I was not able to just go online and order them like I typically would. I physically had to go into the bank or I could have called a 1-800 number 
to order them because I had a new name. It ended up being pretty easy, but it's just, it wasn't as easy as when you had the same name before. For all of my email accounts, I just listed everything that I had. So I changed my last name on all my email accounts probably a month or so before we were even married, just so that way it was already done. To change your last name on your car registration, I keep thinking taxidermy, but it's not. It's a notary. <laughs> Don't go to a taxidermy. But to change your last name for your car, you have to go to a notary and have it done there. You don't have to change the title of your car. I don't think you actually can, at least in my state. I was told that you can't change the name that your title was in for your car. And then for all your random accounts, like utilities, all I had to do was just call them. PayPal is kind of a pain compared to everything else. For PayPal, you actually have to like physically upload documents to your account, um, copies of the documentation for them to update it, and it takes a while. Um, it's been almost a week and it's still not updated on my account yet. Um, any apps that you have that you sell things on or you use for fun, it's generally probably going to be really easy for you to change your last name on your account. Amazon, really easy to change your account. All social medias, none of them were an issue. I changed my name on YouTube like I think three months before we got married and the reason why is because I hit 100 subscribers and I was able to have my own URL link and you can't change it so I wanted to say Rachel Green and not Rachel Fall my maiden name. So I changed my, I had to change my name on my Google account and my YouTube account so that way I could have it as my URL. So that's why I changed that early. And then the next thing I have on my list is voter's registration. So in order to change your voter's registration, you can either fill out the form or I physically try to go to these places as much as I can just because I don't want my personal information being sent in the mail. I try to minimize that as much as possible. So all I did was I went to the courthouse. So you can't do it at the DMV because I tried. <laughs> you have to actually go to the courthouse. And they just give you the form and you fill out the form, you hand it in and they say, okay, perfect. And as soon as it gets approved, you'll get your new voter's registration within a week. And I did, it was super simple. Then the next thing and last thing that I have on my list is your passport. And your passport is a bit of a challenge. I have not done that yet. It's the only thing that I have not changed. Like literally the only thing that I can possibly think of that is not legally changed. Even like the dumb little accounts that I have, the only thing that's not changed. But in order to do your passport, you have to um, print out some paperwork and physically mail that in to get your new passport. I think you have to get a new picture, but like I said, I haven't done that yet, so I'm not 100% certain on that part. But as far as everything else, my advice is make a list and plan out like how you're going to change things so that way it's easier. Yes, some things are going to cost a little bit of money to change. It cost me $10 at the notary to change my registration. I mean, it cost me $29.50 for my new license. It's not a lot of extra money, but it's still extra money that you need to be accounting for because you're probably not planning for it. But overall, it's a pretty simple process. It's a very exciting process because you get to have this whole new name. Yeah, that is how you change your name. And it's just something that I feel like no one talks about. So I figured that because I've had so many messages, literally I've had like 15 people, like the week after I got married, just start messaging me and be like, hey, um, how did you change your, change your name on this? How do you do this? Like, because it's just something that's not talked about. So now it is. I will help you guys as much as I can in the comments. If you guys have questions on something, like I said, this is just my state. So this is how it was for me, your state or your country can obviously be very, very different than my experience. So thanks so much for watching as always guys. I plan to make more wedding videos just talking about my experience. So if there's something in particular that you want to see, definitely let me know in the comments. But as of now, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye guys.